Good morning, church. Glad to see you this morning. Let's stand as we worship our Lord and King this morning. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing can for sin atone. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not for good that I have done. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow. Jesus is enough for me. Yes, the blood of Jesus is enough. This is all my hope and peace, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the love that makes me white as snow. No other fountains I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Cause the blood. other today. just lift up the King of Kings and Lord of Lords as we sing. Broken hearts declare his praise And who can stop the 
Well, good morning. Go ahead and be seated this morning. And uh, man, we're so glad that you're here today. And this is the week, obviously, of Thanksgiving. And we, man, as Morning Star Baptist Church, we hope you have an amazing week this week and a great time celebrating the goodness of God. So we've been talking about the last several weeks, being at the table and celebrating God's goodness because he is good and he does what is good. And this week, if nothing else, take a moment when you're with your family, when you're sitting down and you're getting ready to eat and just sometimes we can get in a rut of just doing the same thing at Thanksgiving. But this year, what if we actually stopped for just a moment and said, hey, we truly are thankful for the goodness of God. That if nothing else, we have eternal life through him, through his son, Jesus Christ. And if that's all we ever have, then that's enough. And uh, so we're just gonna praise the Lord this week. And we're so thankful that you're here. Um, This is a place where you're not just welcome, but you're wanted. And we're glad that you're here today. And when you came in today, you should have received a packet. And inside that packet is a little card. It looks just like this. Go ahead and take that card out. And there's also a pin attached to that because what we ask you to do, if this is your first time here, thank you for being here. And we'd love to send you a gift to show our thankfulness for you being here this week. And, uh, and we'd love to mail that to you. And so you can put as much information as you feel comfortable on there, but we'd love to send you a gift. Um, and if you're a regular attender or a member, we ask you at least put your name and your email address on there um, so that uh, we can keep you up to date with stuff going on in our church because there's a lot going on at Morningstar. And then in just a moment, we're going to receive the offering and you can just drop this right in the offering plate. On the back of the card is some next steps. Maybe you've been coming for a while. You know what? It's time for me to join the church. It's time for me to be a part of the family and what God's doing here. Then mark on there, I want to uh, come. I want to join Morningstar Baptist Church. We'll get, we'll get in contact with you. Maybe you need to get baptized. We have a baptism coming up next month in December. And if you've been putting that off, like, man, I know I need to do it. I just haven't done it. Then just put on there and get baptized. And we'll, get in connect, we'll contact you this week because we want you, don't want you to miss out. And you won't be the only one. We've got a number of people getting baptized that day. So it'll be a great day of celebration. So you can put that on there. Or maybe you're just struggling with something. You're like, I just need somebody to pray for me. The men of our church meet together every Tuesday morning, and we just bathe these things in prayer. We lay them before the foot of the cross. And just know it's great to have people come alongside you and shoulder that burden with you. Because life is hard. It's difficult. Things happen. And it's always great to know that there's a church family that they don't just love you, but they're going to pray for you and with you. And so if you put that on there on Tuesday morning, just know we're going to pray for that. And we're going to lift that up before the Lord. And again, you can just drop these in the offering plate. If you need to write more, it's going to take you longer to do that. You can just drop them right back in the wooden basket on your way out the door. But we have a lot going on. In a couple of weeks, we have our children's program on December the 8th. Um, it's going to be right here on Sunday morning. And our kids have been working super hard uh, to get prepared for this. And it's going to be a great way to showcase the gospel at Christmas time. So you can invite your neighbors, your friends to come and see that and be a part of that. And we're excited about that. That's December the 8th. Also happening is uh, a lot of you came up last week and grabbed some baskets um, to be able to deliver to people to help them out with their Thanksgiving meals. If you did that, the turkeys are in the kitchen on the counter. So you can grab your turkey, you can deliver them today or tomorrow, hopefully sometime before Thursday. Uh, Otherwise, it's a little late, okay? Uh, But you can pick those up in the kitchen before you leave today. And right after the service today, we're going to do a couple things. One, after the service, we're going to pass out uh, the deacon forms. We, the, the, the current deacons um, have been praying and vetting over the new candidates to become deacons to start in January. And so you're going to get a piece of paper as a member of our church at the end of the service, and you're just going to vote to affirm them. The deacons have already confirmed them. Our church is going to vote to affirm them. So you're going to look at the names and their names that you submitted as a church anyway and just circle yes or no on there that you're voting to affirm uh, the deacons. And that's it. It'd be just a few minutes. But after that, we need to have an informational meeting of anybody who might be interested in going on a missions trip. Next year, we're looking at having two different missions trips and we need to just know who's interested. You're not signing up for anything today. You're not, hey, I'm, I'm signing away my life and blood. It's just, we want to know how many people are interested in taking a trip. If you're like at all, like, I, yeah, I might want to do that, then just come. It'll be less than five minutes. We just want to talk to you about what that looks like this year and what our plans are so you can, as we move forward, we can have more meetings and get you more information about that. So that'll be right after the deacon vote today. Um, just hang out. It'll be less than five minutes. We want to talk to you about that because, man, we are super excited about what God's doing in our church here in this area, but also around the world. And we want you to be a part of that. And taking a missions trip, that's a big step. Because when you get out there and you step out of your comfort zone and you step out into another country and you see how hungry people are for the gospel, it does something in you. And it makes you want to come back here and just be that light 
here in your community, and it's an amazing thing to be a part of. And so we want you to be a part of that. It doesn't cost you anything to come to the meeting today. Just, yes, I'm interested in going on a trip. Just hang out with us, and we'll talk to you right after the service today. If our ushers will go ahead and come forward this morning, we're going to receive the offering today. And this is our way of being able to worship God in our giving. And if this is your first time here, we just ask you to turn the card in. That's all we ask you to turn in. Um, but if you're a regular attender or a member, it's our way of giving back to God so we can reach this area in the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we want to be faithful at that. And we want to finish this year out strong. And so it's our way of worshiping God through our giving, just like we worship him through our singing. And so this morning, we're going to pray that God blesses the offering. He blesses the rest of our service as our associate pastor, Ben, is going to come up and preach for us here in just a little bit. We get a chance to hear from him today. And we're excited about that. And we're so thankful that you're here. So let's go ahead and pray this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for this amazing gospel that you've given to us, this free gift of salvation that we didn't earn, we didn't work for, we did nothing for, but you died for us. You died in our place. God, you loved us enough to do that, to want relationship with us. And so God, this week, especially as we sit down and remember and we're thankful, help us to not forget what that means to have eternal life through you. That this world is just temporary. This is not our home. That you have something so much more amazing for us. And God, help us to be thankful for our families and thankful for the time we get to spend with our friends and families this week. We're so thankful for the time this morning to come and worship you in our singing, worshiping you in our fellowship, but also worshiping you now in our giving. So God, we pray you bless this offering, that you'll take it and use it to make the name of your son Jesus famous, both here and around the world, that people will get to know and come to know you because of us being faithful and obedient to what you've called us to do. God, thank you for this moment today that we get to hear from Ben and, and be challenged in your word today. God, help us to all leave here today different and changed because of the power of your word. We love you. Thank you again for this moment. Thank you for the time we get to spend together today. We pray that you're glorified and you're honored in everything that we do because it's all about you anyway. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
joyfully to the Lord. Shout triumphantly to the rock of our salvation. Let us enter his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout triumphantly to him in song. For the Lord is a great God, a great king above all gods. The depths of the earth are in his hands, and the mountain peaks are his. The sea is his, he made it. His hands formed the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep under his care. Our God is so wonderful, and he has a wonderful, powerful, and beautiful name. So sing this last song with me. You were the word at the beginning, one with God the Your hidden glory in creation now revealed in you are Christ. What a beautiful name it is! What a beautiful name it is! The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is! Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you Your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name. 
you today together. Um, and we pray that for us this week, Lord, that, that we would be together with, with those that we love, that we can be together with those that love you, Lord. Um, we praise your name, Father, for the glory that you are, for the majesty that you have. And we just thank you, Lord, for the blessings that you have given us, for a wonderful country, for this beautiful church, for this wonderful church family, Lord, to be a part of, to worship you with, to do life with, Lord. Lord, as Ben comes to speak what you've given him, Lord, may, may our ears be open, may our hearts be available, um, that you would just break them down that much, Lord, that much more, Lord, um, that we can, again, be, be receptive to what you need us to hear, Lord, what we need to hear from you, from our Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord, again. We pray all this in your son's holy name. Amen. You may be seated. Well, it's so good um, to be here with you this morning. And uh, let me just say, I, I have this incredible opportunity every week uh, to work with this awesome worship team. And um, it's, it's something special that, that maybe you don't realize that we have. But for me to be able to get up on a Sunday morning and, and preach and not do worship and it not miss a beat means that we have some incredible people who are using their talents for the Lord in a way that they're causing themselves to be available. And, um, I, just wanna, I just want you to realize and think about um, what we have. And, you know, as we sing these songs, they're bathed in prayer. They are, are measured by scripture. And, man, we unapologetically praise the name of Jesus in every way we know how. But even this week, I just want to, and I'm going to probably... She's probably going to be mad at me, but. Able to be here to play piano this morning. And so I sent um, a um, text message to Donna and I said, hey, Donna, this is really last minute, but I need you to play piano this week. And understand, Donna just picked this instrument. No, she didn't pick it up. It's heavy. But, <laughs> but she learned to play this instrument because at one point in this church, there was a need. You see what I'm saying? Like, this is somebody who's getting up here playing a, an instrument that everybody hears and everybody knows. It's not their instrument. They're giving it their best. And here's what I'm saying. There are people that are here today. And, and man, this is all for free. This isn't even my notes. Um, <laughs> That, that you're here today and there's an area that God's called you to serve in, in this body. And you're like, I can't because I don't know how. And I'm afraid that if, and, and let me just say like, when you trust God and you give it your best, God do, can do some awesome, incredible things when the body of Christ is just obedient. And so I just wanna welcome you to Morningstar and maybe you've been here and you sit here every week and God is calling you to jump in somewhere. And you're like, I don't know if that's for me because I don't know if I can do it. Well, if God is, is calling you, he'll equip you. He'll bring the people into your life to train you. And so let's have a conversation. Put it on your connection card. Talk to a ministry leader. Let's go, church. God is doing some awesome things here, but it's because God's people are obedient. And, and so, man, it's just... As I listened today, they just really just marinated on me. Um, I've really just enjoyed this series, At the Table, Celebrating the Goodness of God. Um, I could do like I do with the teenagers and, and like be like, all right, who remembers week one? And who, um, but I won't do that. Um, the first week we talked about celebrating the goodness of God in our salvation. And we talked about celebrating the goodness of God as even though we, we walk through the valleys. And then we talked about celebrating the goodness of God through inviting and I had multiple people come up to me this week and just were like, I couldn't believe how fast those baskets zoomed off of the platform. And listen, we're, we are perfecting this process. It's new to us. But man, you guys, you guys jumped, jumped in. You didn't know where these families, you didn't know where they were, you didn't know what the need was, but you jumped up and you grabbed the basket, man. So I'm super, super stoked about how that went. But it's caused me to really think about not just the goodness of God and like the abstract, right? But the goodness of God in my life. And this last year, my family has, has experienced a ton. Like we, 
we've experienced and seen God's goodness through new relationships, through a new home where we stayed and then a new home that we bought. Like, it was, moving was hard, right? And so, like, the things we've experienced to, to get to where we are sometimes are difficult, but we experience the goodness of God as we look back on those moments and all the help we had and all the people. And, and we accept, we, we've seen the goodness of God through a new church family. And man, I'm just overwhelmed as I sat down and I could go a really long time talking about the, the ways that God's been good to me. Um, and then we had grow group this past week. And let me just say, like, if you're not in a grow group, you are missing out, okay? Like, and you hear people around you like laughing and giggling because they thought about something that just happened at their grow, grow group last week. But listen, we had soup in my grow group. Like I'm talking about good soup. There was a soup, it was like um, tomato, or it was a vegetable soup with like Italian sausage in it. That stuff was good. But there was multiple soups. So guess what? I had multiple bowls. So I had the potato soup too, and that was good. And there was all kind of fancy bread that I don't know what it's called to eat with this. And listen, I was like, man, my grow group, man, God's good. And then we sat and, and listened to a video um, by Matt Chandler. And Matt was talking about um, community. And he was talking about um, this theory is called recovering redemption and just how we re recover what God has called us to be from the wreckage of sin in our life. And, and I was just grateful for my grow group. And I was processing through all that. And I was working on the worship um, set for this week, praying over that and, and looking through scripture. And I came to the scripture that Sammy read this morning. She did an awesome job doing that. Another person who's outside of her comfort zone. She's like, I don't even like to read in class. So she told me this week and I was like, you can do it. Outside of her comfort zone, but, but doing her best, right? And it was awesome. But I wanna read that passage one more time. I want you to hear what it says, okay? It says, come, let us shout joyfully to the Lord, shout triumphantly to the rock of our salvation. Let us enter his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout triumphantly to him in song. For the Lord is great, a king above all gods, right? He's, he is better than all of it. And then it goes on to say the depths of the earth are in his hands and the mountain and peaks are his and the sea, he made it and his hand formed the dry land. And then, it, and then there's this charge, let us come and worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is not just the king of everything, but he's our God. And it says this about us. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep under his care. And I was like, man, that whole thing is awesome. And then I had this realization. And like, I knew this, but I had this realization that sent me on an absolute like crazy fit this week. God inspired over thousands of years all over the globe men to write and compare us to sheep. <laughs> like the Holy Spirit inspired people to write down all over that we're like sheep. And here's, here's why, here's what I knew about sheep when I started all this, this crazy spiral that I went on. Sheep are dumb. <laughs> and here's what I found as I researched. Sheep are extra, extra, extra dumb, okay? Of all the people, of all the animals in the farm, Sheep are the dumbest. Seriously, they are. They, they're, they're, they're dumber than pigs and dumber than cows. They're real dumb. They're also prey animals. That's what I learned this week. Meaning on every place that sheep exist, something is trying and is successfully killing them. It's like, man, this is awesome. I'm so glad. But then I began to learn more about the sheep. And where it led me is exciting. And I've been so excited to talk to you a little bit in this intro to this today about sheep, which is super weird, but here we go. Sheep have an abnormal ability, than all the other animals on the farm, this abnormal ability to remember the face of a human for years. So like the sheep meets its shepherd and like there's an imprint where the sheep knows the shepherd's face, its voice, it can even learn its name. 
So even though it's one of the dumbest animals and does really dumb things, a sheep on its own it has this abnormal ability to know the shepherd, to know the farmer. Pretty crazy, right? It can also understand the emotional changes of the shepherd based on its facial expressions. Super odd. Here's the thing I found most interesting as I thought about all the things that God has been good to me in this year, as I thought about what I was learning in my grow group, and as I thought about sheep, this is what became the most interesting thing about sheep to me. They're strongly gregarious, meaning they're flock animals. But like on a whole nother level, sheep, see like penguins, they'll pick a mate for life, right? And that's what they need. They need their mate for life. But sheep, they need more than just a mate for life. They need a community. Like they like to be in groups of at least four. Everything that we know to be true about sheep's behavior goes out the window when they're not in a group of at least four. Like you can show a sheep where it's allowed to go and it will stay in that area and it'll even teach its children where the boundaries are. Unless it gets outside of its flock, then they do one of two things. They either run as far and as fast as they can until they get tired. So they further isolate themselves or they get extremely aggressive. Sheep are not typically aggressive animals unless they're outside of their flock. And I was like, holy cow, all these comparisons made the sheep, I've always heard and focused on the fact that sheep are dumb, but in their flocks, the things that they can do are amazing. Like you can build a box around a sheep that's the sheep's ankles and it won't get out because it doesn't think it can. But when sheep get together in a flock, they've been known to climb fences using each other. Like they've done crazy stuff when they're together. But when they're separate, they can't. So what, what, what am I after today? Well, today I want to celebrate the goodness of God and come to the table and realize we celebrate the goodness of God best in community. We're flock animals. Isolation's no good for us. And we lose sight of the shepherd when we're not with our flock. So I'm really excited to look at that. Through the body of Christ, through the church, we experience the love of Jesus. We hear the word of God and so much more. And I wanna look, Paul, as he's wrapping up the book of Galatians, which we're gonna flip over to here, Galatians chapter six. As he's wrapping this book up, he talks about what community is supposed to look like. Here's what he says, brothers and sisters. So he's talking to believers. If someone is overtaken in any wrongdoing, you who are spiritual should restore such a person with a gentle spirit, watching out for yourselves that you won't be tempted. Here's what it says. So you find somebody who's wrecked by sin. What do we do? We restore them. Again, we guard to make sure we don't get separated from the flock, that we don't get separated from the shepherd, but we restore them. They can be riddled by sin. They can have those scars of sin, but we restore them. Here's what I'm saying. We can experience the goodness of God and his mercy and grace through others, and we can show it to others. Here's what I'm saying. Somebody experiences the weight of sin, right? They get wrapped up in something they shouldn't be. We invite them to the table, right? But it doesn't end there. We might have to say, here, let me get you some mashed potatoes. Here's some mercy, man. Mashed potatoes, mercy. See how I did that? <laughs> also, they're good. Here's some green beans. That's grace, right? Green beans, grace, all right? You're just, you're piling it on there because they can't. And you see them, they're sitting there staring at their food. And sometimes you have to say, listen, 
Eat that. And what did your parents say to you growing up? Eat that or what? I'll make you eat it, right? That's what my dad said. He's here. Eat that or I'll make you eat it. And you know what sometimes we have to do? We have to force feed some people the grace of God. When they don't believe what is true about themselves, like, no, you don't understand. That's not what God says about you. I'm too broken. Nope. You're holding their mouth open with a spoon. That's not true. That's not true. But that's not it. That's not all he says. Here's what else he says. He says this. Carry one another's burdens. In this way, fulfill the law of, law of Christ. He says this. He says, carry each other's baggage, the junk, and in doing so, sorry, man, I, my think papers are sticking together. I, I know it's gross to lick your fingers and move papers, but I did it. He says, carry one another's burdens and fulfill John 13, 35. What's that? Jesus says, love one another by this. Other people will know you're my disciples. He says, carry each other's burdens. That's how you do that. He's given a practical step. Here's to me where I think the rub starts. Because I come to church sometimes and I see a lot of people hanging out and they don't really seem like they have burdens. They don't really seem like they have problems. And what does that cause me to start to do? I start to isolate away from the flock. Like, man, I don't, I don't, I'm not a sh the kind of sheep they are. I have to find some other sheep, and then I drive myself into isolation, believing something that's not true. And Paul knows that that happens, right? See, here's the idea. We, we think that the teenagers over here kind of uh, came up with this idea of filters. And they hear me talk about filters all the time. Who in here knows what, a, what an Instagram filter is? Okay. All right, we got to do some little education. All right, teenagers, we're going to have to help your parents understand what an Instagram filter is. All right, so here's what it is. You take a picture in Instagram. You slide to the right or the left, and you begin to get filters. And what it is, it's things that Instagram goes in, and it touches up your face to make you look cooler. or It makes the light around you look better. And, and we've got these Instagram filters. And that's where you hear people talk about the comparison game. Because what happens is I begin to compare myself to their filtered self, Right? It's a not real version of who they are. And a lot of times, this is where at the Thanksgiving table, the teenagers begin to feel isolated because you're like, you kids with that social media and what you're doing is you're putting up a fake version of yourself. You're putting up a fake version of yourself and then, and then you're comparing yourself to, because she's be able to put a better fake version of herself up and the kid's sitting at the table and just getting this like, just you know, helping of, what is that, cranberry jello stuff, that gross stuff that everybody puts on, <laughs> that comes out looking like the can. And they're like, I don't like this. But here's the thing about sheep, and that's true about us. Sheep learn the boundaries. They learn where the flock is because their parents teach them. I want to share a hard truth, church, with us. We, they have a better mechanism than we have, but we have taught them that that's the okay thing to do because that's what we do with our friends, right? How's everything going? Man, it's good. Kids are good. I'm like, whatever, mom, you just beat me all the way here. <laughs> right? And like, it's funny, but the reality is, is, is we don't put a real version of ourselves out to other people and they've just found a technological way to do it better. But we've taught them what to do. And you say, how do you know that's true? Because Paul addresses it in the next verse because he was dealing with it then. This is nothing new. Here's what it says. For if anyone considers himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. So Paul says the issue is even bigger. You're lying to yourself. You're not being honest with about how messed up you are, so you're putting off this air that you're great, that you're awesome, that you're killing it. And then he goes on, and he says this. Let each person examine his own work, 
And then he can take pride in himself alone, not compare himself with someone else, for each person will have to carry his own load. Now, if you don't understand what he's saying and you don't take time to really break that down, you can get things a little confused, okay? So let's look at what he says. Very, very slow, very specifically. He says this, if anybody thinks that he's got it all together and he doesn't, he's deceiving himself. And then he says this, why don't you take a look at yourself? David did this, but he said, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there's any wicked way in me, right? It's an examination of himself through the Holy Spirit. But he says this, examine yourself and see how you're doing. Then you can take pride in yourself. Well, here's what we know to be true. There is nobody in this world that disappoints you as much as you do. That's just true. Nobody lets me down on a day-to-day basis as much as I let myself down. So what do I do? Paul knew what it was. We're mad because kids are doing it on Facebook, but we do it too. So what do I do? I'm like, well, listen here. I know I'm kind of messed up, but did you hear about John? You know what I'm saying? It's like we start to compare our work to other people's. So like my stuff is not as bad as his stuff. I'm doing pretty good. I'm starting to take pride in myself because I'm comparing it to somebody else's stuff. And Paul's like, hey, he got dealt a different hand. He's not you and you're not him. So take a good hard look at yourself. Here's what he's saying. Drop all the filters. Quit looking at all the the comparison game because it'll eat you alive. Quit trying to be better than other people and realize you really, you can't deceive yourself when you're only looking at your list, right? Because you start to see that you're a mess. There's really nothing to take pride in. You start to remember that without Jesus, you have nothing. And then what happens? Then I have a decision to make. I can be honest about the fact that sin is an issue in my life. I can be honest about the fact that I have burdens. And then what can happen? Verses one and two. The believers that are around me can help me in my areas of weakness. It says everybody has their own load to carry. It doesn't negate verse one. What it is is I've got my load that I bring to the table and you've got your load that you bring to the table. What it means is at home, all of us have all this baggage, right? And we leave it at home. Or we leave it in the car. Every once in a while, we get a glimpse into somebody else's baggage. And we're like, my baggage isn't as bad as their baggage. But then I've got to go home and I still have to carry all of my baggage by myself. But we're flock animals. It wasn't designed to be that way. Paul says it like that. Hey, you got an issue in your life? Be, for, be honest about it. So Ben, what are you saying? I'm saying like, it's really easy in a culture and a community like we live in to act like everything's okay all the time. To say, and this is something that we hear all the time. I just didn't want to bother you with it. I just didn't want to bother you with it. And the reality is, it's like, hey, this is what we're called to do. Not just John and I as pastors. That's what we're called to do. To carry each other's burdens. You can be a conduit of the goodness of God to somebody else. As you just come alongside them and say, listen, I don't know how to fix your issue either. But I'll walk with you. Hey, if you can start going down that path, I'm going to have to say, listen, I'm not going that way. We're not supposed to go that way. So I don't leave myself to a place where that I'm tempted, right? That's what it talks about, common sense. 
but it talks about experiencing the goodness of God in community. And then there's a really cool case study that we're gonna look at really quickly in the word of God. And it's in Acts chapter two. It's in Acts chapter two. <clears throat> Here's what happens. So Peter gets up and he's at the Feast of Pentecost and he's like, listen, listen here. Jesus came, the one that you all are waiting for, the one that this whole feast is all about, he already came. You killed him. He already came. You killed him. You done messed up. Here's what he says. Y'all are acting like everything's okay, but everything's really broken. And so what is the response of these guys? Sir, what, what do I need to do to be saved? What do I need to do to be restored? And so what does Peter do? He says, here, come to the table. And, the, and the, the message is no different, right? If you're here today and you don't know Christ, understand this. The Bible says that you stepped outside of God's design, that it led you to a place of brokenness. And it's all this crazy brokenness that we feel and experience in the world. And what do we do to try and get out of it? Well, like sheep, we run into more brokenness. But the good news is, is that Jesus came and he says, I have the keys out of brokenness. I'll take your brokenness. You can recover and pursue my design for your life if you just repent and believe, right? You just trust Jesus Stop running into brokenness. Trust Jesus. We can experience salvation and then we recover and pursue God's design for our life. Well, part of that is community. And so what happens in Acts chapter two after thousands of people come to know Jesus as their savior? Here's what happens. Check this out. I love this. It says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, the breaking of bread and to prayer. So they, they gave their life, they devoted themselves to learning the word of God, to being with the people of God, and to talking to God. Relationship with God, learning about God, and being with God's people. They devoted their life to that. One of the things they devoted their life to was community, and it, it shows how that played out. It says that everyone was filled with awe. People were just, man, this is so cool. And many wonders and signs were being performed through the apostles. And now all the believers were together and held all things in common. Meaning they devoted their lives to the same thing, being with God's people, learning God's word and, and having relationship with God. They held all that in common. They had all focused their life on the same thing, right? And that's what we say we're trying to do here, right? We're trying to follow Jesus the best that we can. We're all trying to do that together through learning God's word, through being with other believers and through trying to have a relationship with him. So that part is not the same. We should all hold that in common. If, if you don't think that's what life is about, we got, we got to check priorities, okay? But if that's what life is about, if that's what it's about, here's what, how this played out. They sold all their possessions and properties and distributed the proceeds, proceeds to all as any had need. Here's what they said. I'm going to live open-handedly. Everything I have is for the good of the community. Now, thousands of people came to know Christ in one day. Okay. There were 12 apostles. Let me just do, help you do the math here. They didn't take all their stuff to the apostles and say, hey, I heard Fred could really use some stuff. They said, I see a need. I can meet that need. I'm going to meet that need because they're part of my community. They, they had everything in common. But guess what that means? They had to be honest about where the needs were. They had to be straightforward about where the needs were. Man, they saw a need and they're like, man, I don't have that liquid right now, but I'll sell something so I have it so I can meet the need. It's this open-handed living. 
seem so foreign to us. But it's where community begins to work. When I'm not trying to protect what's mine, because I know without him I have nothing. And I see other people in the same pursuit as me, and there's nothing I won't give to help them carry their burdens, to help them shed the, the scars and pain of past sin or the just nonstop fight with current sin. There's nothing I have I won't give. It continues on and it says they were meeting in houses every single day. It says that they ate their food with joyful and sincere hearts. Man, nobody had to fake it. In verse 47, they were praising, they were celebrating the goodness of God, praising God and enjoying the favor of all people. Every day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Man, they were experiencing the goodness of God. They were celebrating the goodness of God. And they were going out and inviting other peoples, other people to join them at the table. And every day, people were coming to this hope. Why? Really because they saw community at work like they had never seen community. So, so what, what are we after today? Like, what's, what's the great story, Ben? Cool, we're kind of like sheep. Here's what we need to do. Here's what we need to focus on, and here's what we need to look to. As we look to pursue God and devote ourselves to knowing him, to being around his people, and pursuing real relationship with him, we got to start by being fully known. No more comparison game. No more comparing ourselves. No more hiding our burdens in the closet. Like, hey, don't open that one. No more acting. For those of you that get the reference, no more Instagram filters. Be fully known. It's not until you're fully known that you can realize that in your brokenness you can be fully loved. We got to drop the charade. Live open handedly, sharing and showing the love of Christ to others, even and especially in their brokenness. As we learn more about the needs and struggles of others, we pour the love of Christ because He saw us when we were enemies and He came and died on the cross anyway. And then we celebrate loud. We celebrate loud. That means we get in here on Sunday mornings at celebration time, the music kicks off, and you're like, I don't know this song, but I'm gonna give it my best, man. Like, you ever heard the person behind you that's hearing the song for the first time, but they're gonna sing it anyway, right? Eh, bow for him. You know, they're like, they're just giving it everything they've got. Why? Because, men they're celebrating loud. They're just giving it what they've got. And then we invite others to join us and our community at the table. If everybody bow their head and, and close their eyes. You know, we've talked a lot about community. And it's a real struggle there's so many excuses and reasons that we can all give of why I can't be real honest about my thing that I struggle with. There's all kinds of things that we're wrestling with, that we're fighting through, that we've kept hidden so long that it's grown to a, from a bag in the closet to a monster in the closet. Maybe at some point you've been hurt in community. Somebody hurt you, I know that hurt. And it's caused you to say, I'm gonna leave the flock that God has provided me and I'm going to sprint 
into further isolation. Let me encourage you to turn around, to come back. You're not who you were made to be when you're not in community. We celebrate the goodness of God best in community. Maybe you're here today and you hear about this, this thing of community and you're isolated because you don't know Jesus. Like you don't have hope. You're giving your life to everything that you could possibly do with your life. And here's what I know about that pursuit is you might look successful on the outside, but every night when you lay your head down, there is something missing. There's something that's just not there. Let me invite you to the table. You can't do this on your own. First, let me introduce you to the shepherd. Man, he is good. His voice is sweet. Maybe you're here today and, and you need to have a relationship with Jesus. Your sin has wrecked you. The burdens are too much. And you don't even know the shepherd. As God moves and pulls in your heart, we're gonna give you the opportunity here in a few minutes to come down and to speak to myself, to Pastor John. We've got some of our other counselors up here. Mandy is available, my wife is available. We would like nothing more than to walk you to the table, to pull the seat out and let you sit down and show you a big old scoop of mashed potatoes the shepherd put there for you. And I don't know what you're walking through, but if you don't know Jesus, let me implore you, there's no hope outside of that. Maybe you're here and you do know Jesus. You say, that's not me, I know the shepherd. Maybe you've turned around and you have sprinted so far that you're not sure that you can find the shepherd again. Well, the Bible says that the shepherd is a good shepherd and he'll leave the 99 and he'll chase after the one. He's waiting for you, he's watching for you. He wants you to come home. And there are people here who are willing to uh, gather around you and rally around you and welcome you to the table. Maybe you're a man and somehow you've bought this lie that men are best when men do men by themselves. That's a lie from the devil because he knows if you can be isolated, you can be attacked easy. You're like, well, nobody invited me. Here's your invite. Here's your invite. You know, having community can be kind of awkward because you have to go up to people and say, listen, I'm trying to find people in my life. I can be honest about my mess. Will you be one of those people? You have to have a real awkward conversation possibly. But man, the freedom in realizing that you can be fully known by God and fully loved and that you can be honest about who you are to a group of believers and be loved anyway, but not just left where you are, but moved forward and walked to a place of restoration where your baggage can help be carried. I don't know what God has called you to today, but I know he's moving because the Bible says his word won't return void. So here in a minute, we're gonna sing. There's a few ways that you can respond when we sing. One, you can come up here and there are counselors that are available. We would love to pray with you.